The Tennessee Walking Horse has been around since the 1800s, providing a smooth ride with a high stepping gait. It was originally used on plantation by owners to oversee their land, but quickly became the topic of who owned the best walking horse, and that led to the beginning of walking horse shows in Tennessee. As the reputation of the Tennessee Walking Horse grew, more shows began to pop up as fundraisers for charities throughout the southern states. So in 1935, the Tennessee Walking Horse Breeders and Exhibitors Association was formed, followed in 1939 by the formation of the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration to be held each year in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and would crown the world grand champion Tennessee Walking Horse. The celebration decided to follow the lead of one-night shows and provide an avenue for multiple charities to raise funds for their cause. This show would grow through the years from three nights held behind the high school to the showgrounds it now stands on and covers five days and ten nights. This event would draw people from all over the world and would reach the financial level of providing over $40 million to the economy to the tiny town of Shelbyville, Tennessee in just two weeks. In the late 60s, there was a movement to form a law to prevent the actions of some trainers who were using abusive methods in training. While the vast majority of the trainers followed the rules, as in all sports, there were those who believed in shortcuts and it was causing major concerns. In 1970, the HPA became a law and the Tennessee Walking Horse became the major target of inspections before ever sale, exhibit, and show. At the time, the show industry used a weighted boot in the show ring to help enhance our horse's natural gait. But the boot created a major problem, and if we wanted our horse to be compliant with the HPA, changes would have to be made. The Tennessee Walking Horse has a shorter pasture than most breeds, so the boot would rub and cause large calluses to form on our horse's foot in the front and sometimes around the sides. So we had to come up with a new action device that would have the same effect, but would be flexible while causing no harm to our horse. Many hours and days were spent looking for the perfect solution to our problem. Item after item was used till a simple lightweight chain was tried, and bingo, it worked great and caused absolutely no harm to our horse. You would have thought that would be the end of it, but you'd be wrong. Animal rights groups like the Humane Society of the United States who attacked different animal breeds had latched on to the Tennessee Walking Horse as one of their main fundraisers, and they were not about to let that happen. They immediately started making false statements about the size of the action device we used, and instead of showing the lightweight six ounce chain, they would use large log chains and claim that was what we showed him. Oh, that's what they say we use. This is what we use. They would also use pictures from the 60s to show people and claim that was the damage done by the chain. However, as you can see, there is a major difference in the horse of today and the horse of the 60s. If people took the time to look at our horse and show industry, they would realize that the claims of widespread abusive training methods by people like the Humane Society and other groups is not their opinion. It is something they've made up using the past to describe the condition of our horse of today. Here's an example of the horse that made the HPA necessary, and here's the horse of today. As you can see, there is no comparison. To see how silly the claims are of the Humane Society of the United States, just look at what we as humans wear every day and never think anything about it. If we go in to buy a gold chain, the first thing we want to know is the weight. Knowing the heavier the chain, the higher the cost, but also wanting the value. We buy a watch, we don't consider the weight, we want the features and to see how it looks on our wrist. Look at the weight of the gold chain and you will see how silly believing a six ounce action device or chain would hurt a thousand pound horse. Look at the watch versus the man's weight. Once you do that, you will see that the Humane Society of the United States has used deceit to place members of Congress in unfavorable light just as they use their lives to make suckers out of their donors. Members of Congress need to realize that those donations provided by the Humane Society have a price and is your integrity. I don't care to be made a fool of for any amount of money. And the Humane Society of the United States is great at getting the people to do just that. They paid a guy to lie under oath, so they are capable of anything, even making an accomplice out of members of Congress.